Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevo. Today we're going to be talking about swellings, specifically lipomas. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, drop a comment, share the video. If you feel that these videos are helping you, grab your piece of paper, your pen, and let's go. Before I actually get into the details of lipomas, because this is a tumor, so I shall give you a background of how I want you to be thinking about tumors from now on until the day you die. Remember that a tumor is pretty much a growth that's happening in the body. It could be a growth that's arising from various different tissues and various different places. Tumors can largely be divided into two main groups. Benign tumors, which generally aren't so fatal to the patient, but they can actually kill the patient depending on the location where they are, and malignant tumors, which often tend to kill the patient. The big difference between benign tumors and malignant tumors are pretty much the ability of the tumors to spread or metastasize to different structures or to different organs. Then when you talk about tumors, this could arise from virtually any organ. And remember that the organs are divided into two parts, a parenchyma, which is the functional part of the organ, and a stroma, which is pretty much the supportive tissue of the organ. And each of these structures has a covering epithelium and some connective tissue. Tumors can arise from each of these components. If a tumor arises within an organ, you refer to that as a primary tumor. And primary tumors may either be benign or they may be malignant. If a tumor arises in one area then spreads to another organ, the tumor that's present or found in that other organ is referred to as a secondary tumors. And this is only a property of malignant tumors. Depending on the structure or the components to which these tumors arise, that's how we tend to generally name them. A tumor that's arising, that's a malignant tumor that's arising from epithelium are largely referred to as carcinomas. You could have a squamous cell carcinoma, an adenocarcinoma, the word adeno means gland. A tumor that's arising from a stroma are pretty much, refer, or connective tissue, are pretty much referred to as sarcomas. You could have tumors arising from fat tissue. If it's a benign tumor, you refer to that as a lipoma. If it's a malignant tumor, you refer to that as a liposarcoma. Having given you that background in mind, let us now go in and discuss about lipomas. So remember that lipomas are pretty much benign tumors that are arising from yellow fat. And if this tumor is actually arising from brown fat, it's actually referred to as a hibernoma. Okay, I think this should come from the word hibernation. And lipomas are actually very common. And I can assure you that in your surgical practice, you will deal with them at one point or another. And they are actually the most common benign tumor. And because these tumors could actually be found everywhere in the body, they are ubiquitous tumors and they are also referred to as universal tumors. They could be found anywhere in the body aside the brain. And these lipomas could either occur singly or they could be multiple. More commonly, they occur as single entities. In about 5% of the cases, that's where you have multiple um, lipomas. And in the case where you have these multiple lipomas, you may have some underlying conditions such as multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome or MEN syndrome or MEN syndrome. These lipomas could either be diffuse or localized. I'll show you some pictures a bit later on. And generally, the rule of thumb is the localized tumors tend to be capsulated, and which is a feature of most benign tumors. But with the diffuse lipomas, sometimes they do not have a capsule and they're not so well localized. And these diffuse tumors are pretty much common in the palms, the soles of the feet, the head, and the neck. And they often present as a very, very difficult thing to remove. And they may also be seen in the subcutaneous tissue as well as in the intermuscular tissue. We refer to those as pseudolipomas. Some clinical features of lipomas, first of all, the epidemiology of the condition. This condition generally affects older individuals and it's a bit rare in children. And the most common site where you find these swellings is pretty much on the trunk and followed by the nape of the neck 
and then you may sometimes get them on the limb. And like I already told you, they may be single, multiple, or diffuse. If you get a single localized swelling, it may have a nodular surface. It is non-tender, so it's not painful. But in some rare cases, there may be some pain. It's semi-fluctuant. The reason why it's semi-fluctuant, because remember, this is a tumor of fat. And fat at body temperature remains in a semi-liquid condition. So if you apply some pressure on, or you put your uh, middle finger and your um, thumb on the lateral sides, then you apply pressure on um, the top, 90 degrees on the top of the swelling, you may feel the bulging on the sides. So there may be some uh, semi-fluctuance. It's of course non-transilluminant. So meaning that if you take a torch, a light a torch, place it there, it doesn't illuminate. And most of the times it is mobile and the edge is actually going to be slipping away if you palpate with your fingers. You refer to this as the slip sign. So when, you, when the edges of this swelling are pressed with your fingers, the swelling is actually um, along the edge. The swelling is actually going to be displaced by your palpating finger. So you refer to that as your slip sign. And of course, the skin may sometimes be free. Sometimes these lipomas may be pedunculated, which may sometimes confuse you when you see them clinically. You may not actually think that it's a lipoma. And with the pedunculated lipomas, they may actually even undergo some ulceration with recurrent rubbing, especially in certain areas, like for example, in the armpits. Then, like I already told you, pain is quite rare, but you may sometimes get it if there's, of course, a neural element or if there's compression of a nerve or an adjacent structure. Remember, I told you that some clinical features of benign tumors make them dangerous depending on their location. Sometimes you may get a lipoma that is highly vascularized, and these also tend to be tender. You refer to that as an angiolipoma. And these lipomas can actually grow to a very, very large size, especially those that we find in the thigh, the shoulder, the retroperitoneum and the back, and often these type of tumors are at risk of transforming into a sarcoma. The malignant variant of a lipoma would be a liposarcoma. But with most cases of liposarcomas, what we've realized is that the tumor doesn't really arise as a transformation from a lipoma, but rather de novo, as it, it just starts off as a malignant tumor. Here's an image of a diffuse li lipoma here on the palmar aspect of the foot and the back. So this um, is a diffuse lipoma. Then this is, a, of course, a slip sign. So if you apply pressure with your palpating finger, it slips away. So that those are features of a lipoma. Then here is a pedunculated lipoma. And often, like I already told you, these tend to ulcerate and because of this repetitive friction. So this can sometimes look like a papilloma. So you may confuse this with a papilloma. Then there are types of lipomas depending on the contents that are present within the lipoma. So you refer to it, uh, a lipoma that has fatty content and fibrous content as a fibrolipoma. Uh, a lipoma that has a fatty content and a hemangiomatous tissue or on the surface of this lipoma, you may sometimes see these dilated blood vessels, these small dilated blood vessels that are seen on the skin, which we refer to as telangiectasia. So you may see this in what is known as a nevolipoma. You may sometimes get a pedunculated lipoma, which is known as a lipoma aboregens. You may sometimes get some neural components, and these tend to be painful, so you refer to those as neurolipomas. And you may get multiple of them, so you refer to that as, um, this is supposed to be neurolipomatosis, not neutral. Then you may sometimes get a disease that's known as Durkheim's disease or adiposis dolorosa. So this is where you get a painful, tender, diffuse, or sometimes even nodular deposition of fat. This is very common, especially in the trunk and the limbs. And basically, it's similar to neurolipomatosis and most commonly affects women. And the affected parts, obviously, are going to be the trunk, the buttocks, and the thighs. Usually, these tumors have no capsule around these fatty deposits. So they are referred to as a pseudolipomas or false lipomas because lipomas are benign tumors. And benign tumors have a property of being encapsulated most of the times. Then here's another image of a very large lipoma that was present on the nape of the neck of this individual. As you can see, this is, has grown to a very, very huge size. Then depending on the sites where you find the lipoma, so sometimes it could be found in the subcutaneous tissue. Sometimes it could be found in the subfacial um, space. Sometimes it could be found in the intramuscular space. Sometimes it could even be found in the anterior wall of the abdomen. They may be even um, be arising in the periosteal uh, lining of the bone. 
Sometimes it may be found in the serosa, in the submucosal area, sometimes even in the extradural area. They may sometimes even be found in joints. You refer to those as intraarticular lipomas. They may be found in the synovial membranes. We call those as subsynovial. They may be found as subperiosteal, sometimes even within glands, especially in the breast, the pancreas, and the kidneys. Investigations, generally with lipomas, the diagnosis is usually clinical, what you're going to be seeing, depending on the location that the lipoma may be, because they may sometimes be on the internal surface. So sometimes an individual can present to you with certain other features. So you may want to order some scans, probably some x-rays, even some CT scans or MRIs, depending on that, but usually doesn't escalate to that. And if you so wish, if you so wish, you may sometimes order for histopathology after you excise the lipoma, you may send it to the lab if you, of course, want to rule out malignancy. But most of the times the diagnosis is often clinical. Then the differential diagnosis includes neurofibroma, a sebaceous cyst, a fibroma, a rhabdomyoma, and some other cystic swellings. When it comes to the management of the condition, management, definitive management is obviously excision. So with the small lipomas, you may actually excise them under local anesthesia. And then with the larger ones, you may require to take them to theater. So this is actually a very simple thing to do. What you simply need is, of course, some sterile gloves. You also need a scalpel, you obviously, which is, should obviously be sterile, some gauze, a receiver, a lidocaine, and some normal saline. And then also get some uh, spirit as well as um, iodine. So what you simply do is that you clean the area with your iodine first, then you clean it with your methylated spirit, then of course you don your sterile gloves and you prepare your, your lidocaine, depending on whether the patient is hypertensive or not hypertensive. Generally with hypertensive patients, avoid lidocaine that has epinephrine in it. So just use plain lidocaine or lignocaine. Then you take your 1% li lignocaine and then in inject around and the lipoma and perform a ring block so that the patient is numb. And it actually works very well. So the patient will not be able to feel the pain, but they will be able to feel the touch that's there. Then when you're making the incision on the lipoma, make sure that you make the incision along the lines of langa. So if you actually look so closely on your skin, there are some lines that you can actually see if you pay so much close attention that are known as lines of langa. So cut along those lines because it helps with healing and even with the scar tissue formation, is much less when you cut along those lines as opposed to cutting perpendicular to those lines. So you're simply going to be deepening this incision until you reach the capsule. And then when you reach the capsule, then you, you make the skin flaps that are go you're going to be raising on either side. And then, of course, dissect the capsule of whatever structure is underlying and remove the whole lipoma as a whole. And of course, make sure that there is no bleeding. If there are any bleeders that are there, tie them off and then achieve hemostasis. Then of course, close the skin with an interrupted um, silk suture, which obviously will you remove after some time, after a week or so. Then if it's a liposarcoma, you may want to order a CT chest that should be done to rule out any secondary meds to the lungs. And of course, the later treatment would be a wide excision. And then you want to also add some adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Some complications that may be there with lipomas include infections and hemorrhage, myxomatous change, especially this is common with the retroperitoneal lipomas. You may sometimes get saponification reactions. You may get calcifications of the lipoma. Sometimes you may get sub a submucosal lipoma, which can cause intussusception, especially in the gut. It may also lead to intestine obstruction. Sometimes you may get transformation into a liposarcoma, like I already told you. But with the liposarcoma, this is very common in the retroperitoneal region. It's very common in the thigh. It's very common in the back. And some features that may point you towards the sarcomatous change may include things like rapid increase in size. So please ask your patient if this mass has been increasing in size uh, over the past few months. Then sometimes it may be painful and you may get, actually get symptoms of metastasis to organs. So sometimes it may be blood that uh, spreads to because of spread to the lungs so this patient may present to you with hemoptysis which is coughing out blood then of course the warm temperature over the swelling may also be um, linked to increased vascularity you may get some dilated veins on the surface of the swelling you may get, get this um, liposarcoma actually infiltrating the deeper 
plane and actually restricting its mobility, which is obviously going to lead to skin fixation as well as fungation of the mass. So if you see these things, you should suspect that there is some sarcomatous change that's happening and you may get a malignant thing. So aim to remove it and um, give this person adjuvant chemotherapy or radiotherapy with a wide local excision, of, of course, with clean margins. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this episode on lipomas. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm, drop a comment and stay tuned for more on the YouTube channel. Please keep sharing this page. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Bye-bye.